Hello, I'm here with one of my clients, Lori Howard. She's a member of my Master Heart program and she's a career coach. And I'm gonna have her share some of the lessons she's learned in building her coaching business. And also, she's gonna, I'm gonna ask her to share some tips that she has been giving to her own clients about career transformation, career change. Lori, so great to have you here. Thanks, George. I'm excited to be here. I appreciate uh, you, the invitation. Yeah, absolutely. It's, but you've been such a valuable um, peer in our Master Heart group, and so many people appreciate your, uh, your tips and your advice there. And um, so let me begin with your official bio. Uh, I'm going to read sure. for everyone's for the context, and then we'll get into mm -hmm. some of the lessons you've learned in your, in your business. Okay. So, uh, Lori Howard helps leaders and executives over 40, and I'm going to ask you about that, Lori, why over 40, who want to avoid career burnout to discover um, a way to, to succeed and have a truly satisfying career through her unique system. As a, a certified executive coach and a career transformation coach, she has worked with leaders and executives from a wide variety of industries to discover the work they love to do that they're great at, feel proud of, and get paid what they deserve. She helps people reinvent their careers with confidence and embrace who they are, what they offer, and where they thrive. So beautiful, beautiful. So over 40, you help, you, yes. your bio says you help leaders and executives <laughs> over 40. Why over 40? Well, so typically what happens is most of the clients I get who are over 40 tend to see themselves as a little, a little bit differently than when they're in their 20s. 20s or 30s. They feel a little more scared of career transition, career change. It's usually prompted by different life changes than when they're a little younger. I do have a few clients and they've had a few clients in their 20s and in their 30s. Um, but mostly it's once someone past 40, 40 is kind of the magic number where I notice people start worrying about age discrimination. So that comes up a lot. They're afraid that they're too old to make a change. They're afraid They've invested a lot in the career that they already have. You know, they might have 20 years in a, in a, in a prior career or path, want to make a change, but don't want to give up sort of the status and standing they've already acquired or, or, or even kind of the salary that they've, they're already working at. It, it's a, they perceive the career change to be a different process. And if somebody is younger than 40, but... <laughs> are experiencing that kind of thing, uh, they yeah. can work with you, yeah? Oh yeah, absolutely. I have a couple of clients right now. I have one who's in her 30s. She and her uh, partner just had a baby, and so that was the thing that made her go, I need to, her value started to shift. And she wants a career that she is more passionate about, and she wants to contribute to her household in a whole new way. Got it, that's very good. So let's, uh, I'm going to have you share more career tips. I think that's going to be valuable for folks, some of the folks listening, watching this. Um, but let's get into some of the business uh, lessons you've learned. And, you know, we were talking before, um, before the call and uh, you've got, you've got some ideas that you want to share. Do you want to just go into it or? Yeah, sure. So I, so I, I really sat down and thought about this question. Um, and I think the biggest lesson I've learned comes in kind of like a three pack. Oh yeah. Great. Um, so it's follow your heart, take consistent action and have systems to support you. So when I first began the journey of building and creating and managing my own business, I was following my heart when it came to choosing what the niche is and to choosing who I serve and what I do for them. And then I started to work with some business coaches and experts, especially experts in marketing and I started to listen to them and they, without realizing they didn't know my heart, they didn't know what moved me. And so I would study with them and then I would start to shift the direction into something more logical. What, what external more logical for a career coach to do. And so I would try to follow their advice and then I would get deflated. My business would fail. I didn't want to compete like that. And I, as it turns out, it wasn't really about the competition. It was that I had stopped following my passion. So then I, I have cycle, and then I would get back, kind of get back on the passion horse, connect with my heart and start again. And I would do that again. And I've done that more times than I would care to number. And I finally realized that when I follow my heart, 
in terms of identifying the work that I do, the people that I serve, who are the people I most want to help and what I want to help them with, I am more successful. So as part of that ebb and flow then, it's, it, it's not just though following my heart. It's, it's one piece of sort of one leg of the stool, if you will. So as part of that, I would start dabbling in a variety of um, sales and marketing techniques, each supposed to be the one. And then one day I, real, I, I was reading Get Clients Now and I'd taken a program of that. And one of the major takeaways I had was that mediocre actions taken consistently will get you results, while super perfect actions taken whenever doesn't get you anything. Uh, and I know you said that quite a few times. Yeah, uh, I, I well, really... And you reinforced that lesson quite a bit. It's all about taking some kind of action consistently. And I would, so as I would try, follow different marketing people, I would get on one thing and I would try that and then it would or wouldn't work. And then I'd be like, oh, here's the next shiny object. Let me try this one. Oh, here. And because I wasn't sure what to do, so I would keep jumping. And so now I have, I need to follow my heart and take consistent action to pursue that. Then I found that there was a third piece, which is something else that you talk about a lot, is to have systems in place to support you. Now, it's kind of funny to me because my whole other career, I was all about processes, procedures, systems. I rely on them heavily for everything, except I never put any in place in my business. And so that's really... I feel like, yes, it's follow my heart, have systems to support that path, and then also just continue to take consistent actions along that path. And those three things I feel right now for me are kind of this magic concoction. It's not one to the exclusion of the other. And again, systems are something that I just, um, I appreciate so much about you because you share, you are very systems oriented and you share your systems and it helps kind of, for me, it's helped me kind of clarify exactly what I need to be doing and get that my own system in place faster. So I feel like it's those three together that make it all work. And the real lesson for me is not each one of those, but the collection of all three. I love that. It's so great. So it's such a great, um, simple framework for, for having an authentic and successful business. Yeah, totally agree with you. Follow, follow your heart. You know, we might, I might say be authentic, right? Be authentic yeah, yeah. in your uh, message uh, to what you really believe, uh, whether or not it um, will necessarily please everybody in the world, but what you really believe, yeah. say it, you, what you believe is helpful to your, especially to your ideal audience. I love that. And also be authentic. Like you said, follow your heart. Interesting. I would say follow your heart even in your systems, right? Like even, yeah. even right? Like you, like you said, even the systems you decide to, to put into your yeah. business. And take consistent action. I love that. You said mediocre actions taken consistently yeah. produces results. I totally yes. agree. I mean, yeah. this is why I talk about the whole content being stage one, two, three. Like I'm consistently doing stage one content which is by, in my definition, anything you put out there for the first time, no matter yeah. how much you thought you worked on it, is by, in my yeah. definition, stage one. And because you wanna see the audience, what, what their reaction is to it, and then, and then improve it if they actually like the initial message, you know, the message. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so maybe, and the system, of course, I, I believe in that so much. I think everybody, uh, and whenever I teach systems, I always try to remember to say, listen, it's not about my system, yeah. It's about taking what you see from me and, and fitting it to your own style, yeah. you know, but yeah. It's interesting to me in that uh, one, I find that, you know, it, it is the follow your heart in all of the things and the actions you take and in having systems, but it's, I felt like before I would do well, follow your heart. And then I would be so led by my intuition. I wasn't really having systems to support it uh. or doing anything consistently. Like it felt kind of random for me. Yes. yes. And then um, there, there's great freedom for me in having this, of really embracing this concept of mediocre actions taken consistently gets results because it takes the pressure off. Oh, of yeah. me to get it right. Yes. So yeah. I really yeah. like that element. It, it makes it easier when I realize it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be great. It just has to be out there, you know, yes. take my best shot, but it doesn't have to be my perfect shot. That's right. Yeah. I mean, and I, I believe there's, 
um, no such thing as a perfect shot. Yeah, you well, know, there's that too, right? right? Because, because <laughs> yeah. um, what I work on for hours and hours and dozens of hours, I put it out there. I am yeah. sure I look back on, oh my gosh, I can't believe I missed this. <laughs> or, you know, I can't right. believe I didn't, I didn't yeah. say it in, in as well of a way as I could have. And there's always things that could be perfected. And the reality is if we don't, aren't consistent in our actions, we can't get more perfect over time. Yeah. So don't get the practice yeah. of becoming more perfect. Yeah. Right? Well, I think at the end, people don't, people, I think today people want to work with someone who's a person, not a perfect profile. Yes. Oh yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Um, so uh, do you want to, can you think of anything in particular where these three things apply in your business? I mean, there's different parts of business. Well, there, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess for me, it kind of apply. I, and I guess I feel like it applies in a lot of levels. One, certainly following my heart means that I stay on track with the services I offer. Hmm what exactly am I doing for clients and how am I doing that? For example, I will help people with their LinkedIn profile or resumes. I am not the resume writer that you toss me your information and I crank out something and I send it back to you. I do not work that way. It is a straight up collaborative partnership. We work on it together so that by the time it's done, it's, it's in your voice. It's not in my voice. It's not my clever writing skills. It's something that's, where you are able to articulate your strengths, your skills, your passions, your offerings in the marketplace through this process of collaboration. I do the writing, but I don't, I, you can't just hand me stuff. And if you're just looking for a job, any job, I am not the person for you. There are services out there whose objective is job placement. Um, and get you into any job so that you can be employed. That's not what I do. I help people find their passion career and then get work doing that. But it's a, it's a different thing. So if you're just looking for a job to bring in income really quickly, there are other services to help you do that. And they are much better at it than I am. So I feel like the follow your heart piece is for me, making sure that I stick to what I love and the service I am strongest at. And then making sure that I'm up front, you know, you, you talk about being authentic, letting people know this is, this is what I do really well. This is not. Um, I also think that, you know, it also shows up for me currently in marketing. At the moment, that's a little bit more about being consistent, being visible consistently and having systems. Um, like everyone, my health ebbs and flows life ebbs and flows. Sometimes you have lots of time. Sometimes suddenly something unexpected happens and you have to take care of that. The systems protect you. And for me, systems give me this nice sense of security and safety are in a wonderful form of self-care in my business because whatever else is happening, I have those to kind of hold me up and make sure that the thing I love, which is my business, they're certainly one of the things I love, gets to keep going without me worrying, oh shoot, I didn't have a system in place and now I don't have time. And feeling just like this, this back and forth. Yeah. Jagged. Excellent, excellent, I love that. Yeah, the um, other thing that occurred to me while I was answering that is that I also now do this with my clients. I help them follow their heart regards to their career, take consistent action because you're not, job. the job you love isn't gonna pop up in front of you if you don't do something. And having systems in place because when you're actively looking for work, once you know what you want to do and you have a plan, it can be somewhat tiring and draining to keep going out and seeking. So the system really helps with that, which I just realized while we were talking that I also apply it with my clients. That's really great. And I want to talk a bit about your um, mm -hmm. you know, leaders and executives over 40, right? Okay. Um, what is something you've noticed that you have to say to a lot of them um, because it's maybe it's whether it's obvious or not obvious you need to remind them of it or you need to clarify yeah. like you you find that a lot of leaders in the next of 40 forget about career their career career uh, their passion career i think there's a couple of things one usually the first thing i end up talking to them about is how many of my clients 
grew up in terms of their first career or their, you know, in their 20s and 30s on this path of the goal was to have one career, get a job in a company and move up. Uh, if unfortunately your company was bought or sold or there was a merger, you would still try to navigate that or you try to get another job at another company that had longevity. Um, and we're also sort of taught to seek that one great calling. I don't think most of us get a straight up vocational calling. I think some people do, but I don't think most of us are fortunate enough to hear that, you know, that voice that says, this is what you're meant to do forever. I think we're left with a bunch of strengths and skills and passions, and that can change over time, uh, as can our values. And so we have to, it's up to us to figure out how that fits. And, how and, and if I could say, even the people who said they got that one thing, mm -hmm. they might not be telling us the backstory of all the twists <laughs> yeah. and turns. It, it, it just, it led to the, yeah. the, the, the time we look at yes. their career, it looks so yes. well matched, but it could have yes. gone through all this. Yes, that's very true because they didn't realize that that's what happened. Um, so I think, so I would start with that. And then I usually talk about statistics today. So currently the average number of years a person spends in a single job is between three and five. So no longer is the you job for a long time thing. That is not the thing that employers value. They value your ability to be flexible and adaptable, which they perceive you can if you're changing jobs. So it is normal to make a job change to support your career. The other thing I also talk to clients about that normalizes things, this career transformation concept, career change has become the new normal. Today, the average number of careers a person has in their lifetime, and you figure your career doesn't really start at the earliest to your 20s, right, is somewhere between three and seven. So people will change careers between, you know, two and six times in their adult life. That's an average. So if you think about that, you could be changing your career once every 10 to 15 years, and that's totally normal now. And changing careers is not changing jobs. You're talking about. No, I'm talking like about a career line of work. change. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So you could shift to a whole new field. Um, you know, you could go from working in a corporate world to running your own business, which is what I've done. You could then transition again into being an artist. You could, it could be wild changes. Mm -hmm. It could be slight shifts into something different. But I'm not talking just a job change, the normal kind of promotional or little shift career change this concept of career transition is much more normal now so when people are afraid oh what are people going to hire me for you know how are they going to do that nobody's going to hire me because i'm starting over that happens much more commonly now so there's no reason to be afraid of that and people won't be surprised by it um, and I think if there's a third thing that I talk to clients about regularly right up front is sometimes people are really happy with what they've been doing and then they can't figure out why now they're not so happy anymore. And typically where that starts is our values. Everybody, when they think about getting a new career, they want to jump to the finish and go, what can I do? Here's, a, here's my skills. What can I do with those? And they try to get a job. And then they don't know why that doesn't work. And they've skipped all the kind of internal work up front. First of all, figuring out what's important to you now. We ch our values shift, I believe, over the course of our lives. You, have, you get married, you have a baby, you get divorced, you lose a parent, you lose a loved one. Things change us. They change how we view the world and they change what our priorities are. Um, and that's okay. And so you need to stop and check in and look at what you value as well as what the values are reflected in your career and in the organization you're working for. And you can start to get a picture for why it's not working for you anymore. Sometimes a field or an industry will kind of shift in a direction and we'll move in a different direction. And suddenly, um, you know, I had one client for whom it was a really straightforward, she just valued connection with people and she was an accountant. And accounting in her first five to 10 years of working in that field became very automated and computerized. And so she never got to leave her desk. And so the industry went one way and she was still over here and just lost. 
until we sat down and figured out some new options for her and what else she really would love to do. So, and she ultimately became an event planner. So. Um, cool. Yeah. yeah. It's, so, it, it's so helpful to hear that short story in that options are, there are really more options for people than they often realize. And yes. working with somebody like you who has seen many people have different options opens up a client's possibilities to say, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I really can do anything I set my mind to if I'm passionate about it and yeah. it really is a good fit for me. You yeah. Know? And yeah. so, um, uh, yeah, thank you for, for, for sharing these different tips. Um, let's start wrapping up the call now. Sure. Um, and I'd love for you to share if somebody is uh, watching this and is going through a career change mm -hmm. or knows somebody who's going through a career change, uh, what do you offer? What do you offer to your clients or how would you like to, to share? Yeah. So if somebody's really considering a career change or feeling that sense of frustration, unhappiness, not really sure what they really want to do next, or if they think they know they want to make a change, but can't figure out how they're going to get there from here. I would recommend that you start by signing up for what I call a career clarity session where we spend time really digging into your personal situation what it what you've been doing what's been working what's not been working and kind of delve into your personal goals and values and objectives and look at what you need to do to change that um, and you'll come out of that call with a plan for how to start transforming your career or if you find out that it's just a small change you'll have a plan for that cool great wonderful um, and you also mentioned you have a, you have a, a checklist on your website. People can download, um, five yes. steps to supercharge your LinkedIn profile. So I'll be sure to put a yeah. link in the notes of the video for that as Great. well. And there's also, um, if you can share the link to schedule the career clarity session. Oh yeah, for sure. Great. Yeah. I will. So that if somebody really is feeling like they just want to talk to someone and kind of start getting into some, um, figuring out what's going on and how to move forward. Yeah, that's great. That's that would great. Be perfect. And I just, I just want to acknowledge there's a bit of background noise. I think actually on both of our sides, I have some work going on outside the door. <laughs> yeah. here and and, I, and there's work. construction, I believe, in, the, um, in my backyard, which Yay. I did not know was but, happening. But it's, it is, it's rare. <laughs> so by the time you, you know, whoever's watching this, by the time you schedule a call with Lori, hopefully there won't be, there, there should be. <laughs> no, it should be done by then. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. hope it's done by then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So thanks, Lori, for sharing yeah. your wonderful tips on business and career. Yeah. And uh, it's great having you here. Thanks, George. I appreciate it. Thanks.